Let's talk about clones, Ender clones. Currently in the 3D printing world, especially among reviewers, there's a lot of talk about Ender 3 clones, and not all of it, I would say not any of it, is positive. Now, I suspect that the reason behind this is because we're tired of looking at the same 3D printer over and over again, but I've got kind of a different opinion about clones than maybe okay. most people. I got that ANAT all cleaned up. Where do you want it? Yeah, just go okay. ahead and, and put it right there for me. Thanks. Oh, shoot. Do, do we need to do another take? No, actually, I, I think that we could keep this in as kind of a, a gag about, you know, what I'm talking about here, right? So, okay, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's keep going. Thanks. So I have here the Buku B1, the Focus, that's how I'm going to go with it, Odin 5, and the Anet ET4. And yes, looking at all of these 3D printers, you might be tempted to just write them all off as Ender clones, but I will say that each one of these does bring something new to the game. Now, the ET4, I really had hopes that this would be Anet's redemption story. A while back, Anet was kind of famous for being the ones that were burning down the house. Literally. Okay, fair. They, they made a mistake and, and that caused some problems. But then the ET4 came out and this, this one, while it is Ender 3 in size and form factor, it added an auto bed leveling. And I really wish that it had worked, but this particular machine's Z motor was straight up broken. I have another one that I'll check out, but instead I made a video about well, my frustrations just kind of vented in the entire industry in general. So this one I'm not going to give a score to right now. But the Focus Odin 5, I handed this to a friend of mine to review, and you'll see he got a couple of prints out of it, and then one that failed, and then some bad prints out of it. He had a nozzle jam, and he tried to fix it himself and ended up damaging the heat sensor on here. And that's what I noticed, that this particular heat sensor is very clever. They added a circuit board right next to their hot end so that all of their connectors plug into that circuit board and are then shuttled out to the motherboard. This makes repair on this machine theoretically very easy if you can get the parts. See, now Focus needs to make it available to you to get the parts. Now, fortunately, they were responsive. I contacted them. I said, hey, I've got this problem. They said, no problem. We'll send you the part. And they sent me a whole new hot end replacement, which was super easy to just unplug the few connectors that I needed and plug them back in. Now, this also brings something else to the mix. This is the 3D printer that folds down. So theoretically, you could remove a couple of bolts, fold down the Z-axis gantry, carry it to wherever you're going, stand it back up and put it back together. However, these things are just easy enough to carry if you just use the gantry as a handle and just take it wherever you want to go. So I really don't see the the value in folding it down and carrying it around. I never thought of all my 3D printers, gee, I, I wish that this I wish that I could take it back to being flat packed so that I could carry it somewhere else. I know some people are excited about that, but I just don't get it. And when I run the numbers on this printer, its build volume isn't that big, its price is a little bit higher, and overall, it's fine. If I were to redo the tier list right now today with the numbers on this, this would be just under the Ender 3, putting it in about the C rank. It's nothing to get excited about. It's just, okay, I get the point. Clones, it's fine. Now, the Buku B1, on the other hand, I also handed this to a friend to review, and then I took it myself and did some reviews on it, and yo, know, he had a good time with this printer. There were a couple of things that he noticed when he was putting it together that the instructions weren't clear enough on, and as a result, he made some mistakes, but was able to correct them. He wanted to do some upgrades to this, and then decided that he didn't need to because it was printing good enough, and sure enough, it's printing good. Overall, the Buku has a large, slightly larger build volume, but a really cheap price. I gotta say, this one 
ranks really high on the tier list when I run the numbers for it. It's it's a super impressive machine putting it in the A rank if, if I were to do the tier list again today. So we see here the spectrum of Ender 3 clones that we might get. We might end up with something that's frustrating and just doesn't work and we're not happy with it. We might end up with something that is probably better than the Ender 3 and still works, but a more expensive printer. And we might end up with something, a diamond in the rough that really just impresses. Some other reviewers have suggested that this flooding of the market of Ender 3s is diluting the market and making it difficult for consumers to choose what they want and that they think that maybe this is their strategy to make it harder for Creality to sell 3D printers. But I don't think that that's the case. I, I don't think that they're trying to get rid of Ender 3 by putting out so many options. You don't develop and test and package and sell hardware like this just to hurt somebody else. No, this isn't diabolical capitalism. This is a gold rush. Everybody saw Ender 3 doing so well and they all want a piece of that pie. But the thing about the gold rush that most people forget is that most of the prospectors didn't get rich. Most prospectors ended up losing everything that they had in the gold rush. But the people who succeeded in the gold rush were the people who serviced the prospectors, the coachmen and the cleaners and the infrastructure that built up around the gold rush. What that means for this particular gold rush, I'm not quite sure. However, Tom in his video about Ender 3s mentioned hamburgers. He equated all of these Ender 3 clones to cheap hamburgers that you could buy and it doesn't matter where you buy them from they're all the same well the thing about burgers is there are some burgers that are superior i like to get my burgers at a little place called in and out the thing about in and out if you go into in and out their menu is super simple hamburger cheeseburger double double french fry drink shake and that's it in and out has a focus and that focus results in quite frankly, one of the most amazing burgers that you will ever eat. Mmm. They nail it on the first bite. The bun is toasted. The lettuce is crisp. You get the crunch and the squish of the meat and the tomatoes and grilled onions if you get it. And you know what? These are one of the few burgers that actually look like the pictures of a burger at a restaurant. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna nom on this one one more time. Mm. Mm. Well, we're gonna turn this video into a recreation of the Andy Warhol Burger King video. Mm. The thing is, how did In N Out do it? How did they make a burger that was so delicious? And quite frankly, only $3 for this burger. Well, the answer is focus. While everybody else was focusing on making the clone burgers, in and out focused on how to make the burger better, how to figure out what people want and deliver it to them. And that focus makes in and out spectacular for, for the price. And can the same apply to 3D printing? Is one of these companies going to make a focus and make a 3D printer that is really what people want? Of course, the question is, what do people want? And I have a theory. What if one of these 3D printers had options? What if it could have a filament runout sensor on there, optionally? You could even add it later. Now, that would take a little bit of research. We would need to be able to attach it on here and then plug it in. And then what would be really cool is if the firmware recognized, oh, now I have a filament out sensor, so I'm going to act differently. I'm going to, of course, stop the print if the filament runs out, but maybe I'll take a page from, well, really, this is just a feature in Marlin, but I first saw it in the Prusa printer, where you stick the filament into the filament sensor, 
and the machine responds by going, oh, we're loading filament? Cool, I'll start heating up so that we can do this. What if it had a bed level sensor and when it detects that you've installed it and plug it in, it will respond accordingly. Without it, it'll just assume that you're leveling the bed properly, but with it, it'll do the bed sensing before each print and you'll never have to level your bed again. What other options could it include? Well, you get the idea that we could have a modular 3D printer, and yes, on the cheap end, it'll basically be the Ender 3 that we're all used to with all the fiddliness that you need to do, but on the high end, you can buy the sensors separately, plug them in, and just have it automatically work with it. This is going to take some time and effort to develop. It's going to take some focus. But if they do it, if somebody could do it, they might become the in and out of the Ender clone market. See, my opinion is clones aren't a bad thing. This is a collaborative effort to make something better. Now, mind you, most companies are simply throwing their ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks, but maybe out of all of this, somebody will make a superior clone. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description, and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and see you next time.